All right, we are on to day two for Duels Rune Terra number 16. And to start off the day, we had Bry Guy take on Zramis. Bry Guy uh, has been in the top cut previously for Duels of Rune Terra, as well as Zramis, who we all know uh, was also a participant in the PCS Trophy that we cast a little while back. Uh, seems like a while ago. I think it was only like two months ago at this point. So, uh, <laughs> but anyways. Round seven, Bry Guy versus Ceramis of day two. Let's get into the gameplay. Quick, and it looks like I don't know. We just uh, nobody else is nobody else is on yet. I imagine a bunch of people are starting up their streams, but we do have. Zram is here playing Bry Guy and uh, Boulevard. You mentioned both of them are X and 2 right now, right? Yep. So we are sort of playing for our tournament lives here. We had mentioned there will be, you know, a couple of X and 3s, but it is by no mention a guarantee. And Bry Guy is actually one of the few pirate aggro players in this tournament. And by few, I mean the only one. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've classified what a few means, um, wow, really? So that's, that's interesting. So, and I... You know, it's funny. You just made that comment, and I even had to, like, check my brain quick because I'm still getting used to the whole one deck versus three deck. And I was like, yeah. what do you mean he's the only person? Oh, wait, <laughs> never mind. Okay, that's why. So, okay. Well, wow. I'd, I'd forgotten that last night I had taken it upon myself to actually do a full deck breakdown of NA to figure out what we were actually seeing out of players. Yep. Uh, you know, th there were a lot of one-of decks. Uh, scouts and Endure were and discard were the only sort of aggro decks in the format a lot more rocka tom kench than i expected to see but you know for the most part we were pretty uh par for the course on what we thought we would be seeing versus what we actually saw i know we had mentioned that we thought war mothers was the most popular deck it wasn't but if you combine it with tlc then it was rocka tom rocka tom and i i don't believe i'm very curious to see speaking of rocka tom uh, what the top cut looks like. So in a couple rounds, we will have the top cut done. We are doing two rounds today for anybody who's either new to the tournament or just joining the tournament today. Uh, this is round seven. We will have a round eight and then cut to top 16. And I'm very curious to see what we have as far as decks are concerned. Is it just going to be littered with Lee Sin and TLC War Mothers and uh, maybe some TF Swain, which we did finally see pop up towards the end of the day yesterday, with possibly a random elusive sprinkled in there. So very curious to see uh, what everybody's brought. Yeah, with so many one ofs in the tournament, I would imagine that we're going to have at least, you know, maybe three or four of those sprinkled throughout Top Cut. It was actually interesting. Uh, earlier in the day, the finals of the Eurasian portion of this tournament came down to uh, Twisted Fate Swain versus Frostbite Midrange. Uh, oh, okay. Real interesting. I didn't catch that final. So TF Swade and Midrange Frostbite sounds like <laughs> it's, it's a very typical matchup, let's say. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, that's actually surprising that there was no... I was expecting at least a Lee Sin or a uh, War Mothers in there. But didn't you say... Wasn't most of the entire Eurasian side TF Swain yesterday? And uh, Yeah, they definitely okay. were mostly TF Swain. I only did their breakdown for what decks they were seeing on day number two. Uh, you know, the people that actually gotcha. bothered to show up for the second portion. But. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so just a uh, heads up, because these were some of the other rounds that we were looking at as we uh, just start, you know, getting going here today. I know we just kind of jumped into this game. Uh, we do have Pat Pat, who we were following yesterday. I would, obviously, I got to bring up Pat Pat. I, I, you know, I know Boulevard's, you know, saying I'm kind of biased towards him uh, yesterday and today. But you know what? Hell yes, I'm biased towards Pat Pat. <laughs> Because he's bringing an elusive deck, playing random 7HS, both X and 1 right now. We also have Bruised by God at X and 1, playing Papachima, who is the only undefeated uh, person right now. So we'll see who's able to end the day uh, undefeated, if anybody, and uh, who does make top cut. Yeah, for what it's worth, the finals uh, in the Eurasian tournament was actually won by CDS Fall on Frostbite Midrange, who was the only undefeated player throughout their Swiss portion, 6-0. and So took that entire tournament in XO run. So I'm excited to see if we can get a repeat of that in North America. It's not often that you get to XO Swiss and win the entire tournament. There are car a few card players who are superstitious and will actually just concede the last round to make sure that they don't run into that curse. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, for any anybody who's a football fan out there, I think I've made a couple football references lately, but uh, 
it's like the Patriots that year where they they were gonna go undefeated and then they lost the Super Bowl. They literally won every game <laughs> and then lost to the Giants. And yeah, feels really bad. That is definitely a superstition there. But getting into the gameplay, we have a make it rain getting fired off here. Uh, gonna feel pretty good because that's gonna make everything trade super even and get the one damage to the face. So also make it rain there by Braggy. Yeah, and that is not only going to protect this crack shot Corsair, but it's going to make uh, Zeramis feel really bad for not actually lining up a block with that Mentor of Stones. And so far, really just struggling to find his footing against Aggro, which is understandable. Already down to eight life. The Gangplank hasn't even come out yet. If it does come down here on Curve or a Jack the Winner, I think this is just the end of the game. Zeramis so uh, just yeah. finding that Eye of the Dragon way too late. I mean, Zeramis finding everything <laughs> way too late. Uh... I mean, you got three gems in hand and basically nothing else. Nothing in this hand on the side of Zeramis is really going to prevent Bry Guy from just going in for the win. Uh, you could deny a decimate if that happens sometime soon. But the, the decision to hold back the Mentor of the Stones, you know, at first I want to say, okay, there's no units, there's no followers or champions in Zeramis's hand. So why bother trying to save it to buff anything when you don't have anything? But maybe Zeramis thinking, well, my hand is just this bad where I just need to hope that I top deck a Lee Sin or something that's going to be useful and uh, hope that I can buff it with this mentor instead of using it for the block. And like you said, getting punished there with the make it rain. And I think because of that decision, going all in on that decision, uh, just going to put Zeramis even further behind here. What second spell did Zeramis play last turn to get the Dragon Link? Was it... Because he only played one gem. Did he healing or guiding touch? No. Oh, all right, I was going to say, how did we get a Dragon Link? Because my... Uh... My connection did not load here. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> it just, like, froze on his screen. So yeah. I'm actually not sure because I had, did not see any spells get played. <laughs> so I, I saw the one gem get played, but it, it does open up the Bastion to trade with the Misfortune, which I think is something that you're going to have to do. It is really awkward. It is really unfortunate. But if you use the uh, Twin Disciplines to buff up the health of it, it's not actually going to trade with anything other than the Crackshot Corsair. Which I would imagine is why you buffed up the attack of this Eye of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we're going to take out the Misfortune. And, you know, as long as the attacks line up a certain way, we're pretty close to just dying here on the side of Zeramis anyway. Yeah, and we do have a Lee Sin finally. So, you know, maybe we get a buff with this Mentor of the Stones. But being at 8 health, I can't imagine, especially with the attack token on the side of Bry Guy, that there's not some sort of something in hand that's going to be able to close out this game. Sure, the the life steal might help on this Dragonling, and there is a twin discipline. So surprised to see the gem go on to the eye of the dragon as opposed to the Dragonling. I was I was just gonna say the same thing. I think it's because of the twin uh, disciplines though, because you could always just play that on the Dragonling. <laughs> Well, if you play it to buff the attack, you don't actually get any lifesteal because you die to the Misfortune ability. Oh, that's right. So he'd actually have to play that to protect the Dragonling, if that's the yeah, case. Yeah, so I was I was pretty sure Bastion was coming out this turn, and I think we wanted to trade more effectively with the Eye. I do think if this Eye... I mean, I guess the Eye wants to block one of these 3-3s three or maybe the Jack the Winner, but things are really not looking good for Zeramis here. Wow. Yeah, I... I <laughs> it's It's... All right, looks like he's considering playing this gem on the Dragonling, like you were just saying. I'm trying to think of what the gem onto the Eye of the Dragon trades better with. I guess, uh, what did you say? The Jack the Winner? Uh, Jack the Winner, Jagged Butcher, Misfortune, all of those. I had figured that the Bastion it, onto okay. the Dragonling was going to go with the Misfortune. Uh, but now this Gangplank does sort of change things. I mean, this is a yeah, three this... damage guaranteed coming at the face already, so... Yeah, I, I don't... I think this is just... This is just going to be lethal. I So, it is interesting. You can deny the Misfortune ability and still get the lifesteal off of the Dragonling. Because we're going to get another Dragonling next turn. And then that way you're maximizing the amount of lifesteal you're getting with Dragonlings. Because then you can play the Twin uh, dis Disciplines on attack. So, that might be a consideration that Zeramis goes for here to actually save this Dragonling. We could also... Ba no, Bastion does not affect skills, right? Uh, correct. So yeah, no, Bastion affects skills. Yeah, it gives you a spell shield. D is spell shield spell shield? Does oh yeah yeah because it wait does it specifically say skills though? 
uh, spell shield? Yeah, because like I know it'll yeah. it'll protect against like a dragon's rage, but that technically puts a spell. Oh, it's putting a spell on the stack, I guess, with the skill. So okay. Yeah, yeah, it, it protects against devour of the depths. So actually, opting to to still use the deny though instead of uh, the bastion, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm glad Zeramis decided to take a little time before using that deny because it's probably a pretty easy mistake to pick the wrong gun to deny there. <laughs> so they both yeah, look he, pretty he sat similar. There and kind of hovered between them, <laughs> and I, I do like the deny. It is gonna let him live at one, which is scary mm -hmm. um not sort of your ideal life total and zaramis is still very far away from winning this game and now without any healing unless we can kill this misfortune right here right now and you know pray that Bry guy doesn't have a backup copy you know we're in a rough spot we don't have <clears throat> anything to say about a noxian fervor or a decimate there's a lot that Bry guy could have to finish off game number one yeah i think the only thing you can do is make sure you summon a unit here because you don't want to you know make it rain uh, at least there's a little RNG involved in it, which I think we're... Nope, just decimate. Oh, okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Does the job even better than make it rain. And wow, so Zeram is falling there pretty quickly um, to Bry Guy. And Bry Guy... So I wanted to mention this before we started this game. I have not seen Bry Guy in... Well, I've, I've seen Bry Guy floating around joining these tournaments, uh, but hasn't topped lately. And I remember Bry Guy in the early days of Duels of Runeterra was... Um, I think got pretty consistently some top cuts. Maybe I want to say around like the six, seven, eight time period. <laughs> so I know this seems like forever ago now. I'm not sure. That exactly was once. forever yeah. ago. <laughs> that was like a year ago. Um, but, and I think Bry Guy, I, I don't believe Bry Guy actually won a Duels of Runeterra. Um, oh, actually, no, no, no. Didn't we? We interviewed Bry Guy, didn't we? That doesn't sound right. Maybe not. Who, maybe it wasn't you that I interviewed him with, because Bry Guy's the one that I interviewed, and I found out that he speed ran Mario as well. Um, oh. So that's why, like, if you go to his account on Twitch, he has a Mario picture. But uh, anyways, good to see Bry Guy back in the mix here, hopefully able to get a top cut. And Zeramis, not the easiest opponent to go ahead and uh, make it through to the top cut. So we'll see what side deck option Zeramis decides to go with here. I'm going through the old... Duels of Runeterra, and it doesn't look like Bry Guy won any of them. I also checked Jamfest; okay. no wins over there either. Was it maybe it was a runner-up thing? Because I know sometimes we interviewed runner-ups if the uh, if the finalists couldn't interview, or maybe I just completely imagined it. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, all the tournaments just mushed together in my head. So the side deck options that Bry Guy has available. One of the things that we constantly criticized coming into this weekend was that Aggro doesn't have great side deck options. If you bring an aggro deck, it is very like I don't think you're going to side deck and then you know sit down and look at your deck and go, yeah, this is much better than what I played game number one. It's pretty straightforward. You don't have a lot of options. So what we did bring here was warning shots, dreadway deck hands, a couple of scorched earth for that counterplay, uh, two salvage, three twisted fate, and three riptide rex. That's the whole thing. Basically, we're getting riptide rex out of our sideboard is kind of the takeaway from this. Yeah, and I'm um, just looking at. Looking at the deck of Zeramis too, just trying to see if there's anything new. It looks like so Zeram or not Zeramis, Bry Guy. Bry Guy actually playing three crusty codger main deck. And this is interesting because we saw who was it yesterday that had sided in the Krusty Codger? Was it the Black Boss? Yeah, it was Black Boss. Alright, so Black Boss actually sided it in in an aggro matchup, which he almost ended up winning just due to very close, over aggroing yeah. the opponent, which he was actually going up against Pat Pat's elusive. And almost out aggroed the elusive with actually drew three of the crusty crodgers that he that he subbed in. So interesting to see this as kind of a I don't know. I mean, I technically it's like a better Scythria, right? I mean, you have the opportunity to potentially heal it by two. I don't think you're ever doing that in this deck, but how dare uh, you discount the impact of the elite tag? I, I know, right? Uh well basically, yeah, once again, we're valuing the elite tag at two potential healing for health. Uh not sure if I agree with that there, but uh, yeah, but it does basically provide Bilgewater with another uh, another one drop that's a 2-2 two -two in, in conjunction with this Jagged Butcher here. So that's a pretty strong early game. And then Zeramis does have a lot of anti-aggro tech here in the side deck. We've got Nopify, we've got a couple of Tasty Fae Folk, you know, potentially Astral Projection. I don't know if this is the kind of matchup where it comes in. Look like it is not. He no. didn't end up putting that one in. And Bry Guy also with three Fortune Croaker. I'm telling you, Betty Crocker is the amazing card of this this uh, recent release 
of cards that have come out. It's amazing. It's I mean, when you drop this down, it's it's a 2-2 two -two draw card. And in an aggro deck, it's just giving you another turn two to curve out with and additional cards that could just be, you know, more burn that you're drawing into. And as we're seeing with this Crackshot Corsair being buffed previously up to two health, this comes in even bigger now with this Fortune Croaker card. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely impactful, but Zeramis now has found his Lisa in a timely fashion, has down the early Eye of the Dragon. No misfortune to counterplay this Dragonling here on turn number three. Instead, it is going to be a, just a little bit more burn thrown at the face with this Imperial Demolitionist. Man, every time I see Imperial Demolitionist in a deck, I think, is this it? Is this the time that we get to see <laughs> the return of Crimson Disciple? <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna go with a big hell no on that one. <laughs> unfortunately yeah, so far it's it's been a big no across the board <laughs> yeah and uh i gotta agree i would like the crimsons to uh to get buffed but alas we are not at that point in the game yet we do see a deny though top decked by zoram is here and just going in for a lot of damage again bry guy we will get a decent trade with the goat um, you know, if he does want to go ahead and block something like this Jagged Butcher, he will also get a gem. Looks like we don't want the goat to go down to one health, though, which makes sense. Plays around, make it rain a little bit better, um, which we do have three of, obviously, in the deck of Bry Guy alongside three Fervor and three Decimate as far as the spell lineup is concerned. And yeah, going down to two health is great because then you get to throw the two gems on the goat, get it back yep. up to full HP, make it a more effective blocker for later. Although I do think it's a little more likely that we get down this lease in this turn. Yeah, little, uh, yeah, because actually, so two gems would actually put it back up to four. So, yeah, that does provide essentially an additional three attack blocker unit, if that <laughs> makes sense. Um, Good word. Yeah, I know. That was, that was, I probably could have chosen those uh, words in a better order there, but uh, I do like that decision from Zoramis here. And the Noxie and Fervor, though, going to come out and ensure that this Eye of the Dragon doesn't get more value. That's a really fast deny on the side of yeah. Zoramis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you not only baited out a Fervor on your Eye of the Dragon, which is three damage conceivably, like, you know, later on in the game that won't go face, but now you're saving this Eye of the Dragon. Uh, this feels really good. And you still have the Lee Sin gem play for the turn. At least, you know, get that Betty Croker off the field. Lee Sin sitting at 2 HP. Not going to feel too bad for you. Yeah, and it, it, I, I wonder if this is kind of the situation where you can afford to kind of use the first lease in as a utility lease in. you know you kill a couple of units try to eat out as much removal of your opponent as possible like how much do you actually need this lease in to act as a win con through the early stages of this game uh, i would imagine the answer is not a lot given how uh, sort of decisively zeramis wanted to throw that first mm -hmm. zenith blade onto the goat you know not getting the daybreak effect off of that uh, so the lease in still pretty far away from being a win con and this goat is getting it done for the time being yeah, I can't tell you, you know, in, in playing this deck myself on ladder too with Lee Sin, I can't tell you how many times in various matchups, especially aggro, where you actually just want to get the Zenith Blade down on any unit. It doesn't actually matter. Like, Lee Sin is no longer your win con. It's, let's just get an Eye of the Dragon or a Goat or something on the board, buff it up, and now your opponent can't deal with it because you still have things like Bastion and Deny to protect that larger buffed up unit. And when it's an earlier game deck like Bry Guy is playing... They're not going to have the removal tools that some of those later game decks are going to have to deal with that one buffed up goat or one buffed up eye of the dragon. No, definitely not. I mean, we, you would have loved to get it down on a tasty Fae Folk, but I, personally, I've played a lot of Lee Sin on ladder, and when I did, I played the tasty Fae Folk in the main because I knew I'd run into aggro a lot, and it can actually be really hard to get the Zenith Blade off onto that. At only 2 HP, it's kind of a high-priority target for your opponent to go for. That's why I started running things like Sun Blessed Vigor, which I'm a little surprised not to see in the side deck here. Just having that auto-burst to permanent health onto some of these units that you want to pillar on feels really good. Here we're going to see the Noxian Fervor finally take out the Eye of the Dragon, and we never got a Dragonling out of that. So the life gain not coming out, but there's the Bay Folk off the top. Have the mana for a deny to protect it as well. And yeah, this, this Fae Folk is going to get the job done here. This is why this card is in the side deck specifically for this matchup. You know, Zeramis at 8 health. It's very possible that Bryguy can still finish this off getting another Betty Croker down here. And, uh, you know, who knows? We could have a Decimate in hand. I imagine Zoramis will go for the open attack because of that with this uh, Tasty Fae Folk just to ensure he doesn't lose to something like a Decimate. Uh, especially with this attack. I mean, 
There's going to be a lot of damage coming through, but the Tasty Fae Folk will be able to block here. So it's essentially 12 damage that Bry Guy is going to have to find a way to squeeze through. And we're going for the Charger. Uh, Zeramis says, you know what? You're already down to half your life total. I could grab the Serpent and try to play a little control-centric with the board, but no, it does behoove me a little bit more to go ahead and try to take this more aggressive option and see what we can get done with this one. Uh, yeah, that's right, Sumo. That's right. I did get the emotes. Yeah, damn straight it's your fault. Now I'm going to throw it back in your face for once. All right? <laughs> and, uh... She who, what's up, my man? Thank you for the raid. Appreciate it a lot. Thanks to uh, everybody who is joining. You have made it just in time for the start of day two of uh, Duels Room Terror number 16 here. And we have, if you guys don't recognize Bratch Kata, that is also Zeramis, also known as Zeramis. And we have Bry Guy here. This is uh, game two. I actually don't have the uh, the score tracker up because we just got into this game super quick. So I'll, I'll work on getting that up. But it, Bry Guy is up one nothing right now. Yeah, it's actually interesting. There were a lot of European players that entered the NA portion of Duels and Terra. The time zone actually working out better for them than the EU tournament once it got combined in with Southeast Asia. Uh, Zoram is definitely not alone in this tournament. But now things looking pretty good for him. I mean, you can fire off this deep med. Your opponent is down to two mana, so you don't have to worry about losing this goat to anything that I can think of off the top of my head. The board is completely in your favor, and I don't think you go for an open attack. I think that you do want to get down this charger and try and present lethal, though Bry Guy will have probably something. This Pale Cascade, though, could represent all that you need it to. Here comes the charger. Yeah, charger always a... Uh, or actually, sorry, I was going to say serpent. Didn't he have the option to go with the serpent? Yeah, instead decided that I don't need to control the board with the Serpent. You're only at 10 life. I can actually go for the lethal here. It's a realistic option. And Bryguy didn't play any additional units last turn with the two mana. So unless he top decked another unit that he can play for two or less, he's not going to have one here. And Zeramis will have lethal depending on what Bryguy has. Oh, so the gems going onto the Lee Sin is actually, I, I think, a little bit of a bait. Because if you put the two gems onto the other two, you know, if you throw two gems onto the charger, that means that you're representing 12 damage over a two health blocker, and you're just going for lethal. So I like playing the two gems onto the units that are actually going face, representing lethal, still giving the lease in barrier. I don't really care about killing Jack the winner if I'm killing Bry Guy. Yeah, no, it's uh, if you're just getting the win under your belt, then it actually doesn't matter at the end of the day. So we'll see if that's the case, if Bry Guy has some sort of response here to this attack. Uh, looks like we are going to buff up this goat a little bit more. Man, these goats, you know, ever since the goat was buffed, uh, for those who don't know, it was a 3-1 initially. Changing it to a 3-2, this card is suddenly hella good. Uh, we have seen this in every Lee Sin deck, and it gets work done in so many Lee Sin games. This is a little bit weird on the side of Zoramis, you know, going, splitting the difference on the gems. So now not only are we not killing our opponent, but we're not killing Jack the winner. And now Pale Cascade has to be committed to one of these. I would have preferred to see the second gem go onto the Lee Sin, the Pale Cascade go onto one of these units, probably the Charger to try and dodge something like a Make It Rain. We've already seen two copies of the Noxian Fervor out of Bryguy. If he has the third one, I think that's the only way that he can actually get out of this through this Pale Cascade. But I don't understand Zoramis' line of thinking and splitting the difference on these gems. Yeah, and it looks like... Pale Cascade is going to get used here. We'll see on what. It's not quite enough damage on the GOAT. It does put... Uh, or actually, sorry. The uh, the Overwhelm damage just will be enough. Yep. With the Charger there. So that is going to be game two. Going to Zeramis. Tying this up 1-1. One, one. And again, both players, for those who are just getting caught up with the tournament, uh, they are X and 2. So whoever loses this, they do still have a shot to make the top cut as some X and 3s will still make it but very less likely uh, to do so and uh, less likely to have an easy path to the top cut as well. So it looks like both players just queuing up into game three. The side decks, they're cool with them. Uh, and, and like we said yesterday, or like I said yesterday, um, you know, generally speaking, we've seen that game three, most people are not changing up their side deck choices. They just, they side deck between game one and two, and then they're just content if it goes to a game three. 
Yeah, in physical card games, most of the time when you see side deck adaptations yeah. between games two and three, it's because the one thing changing is who's going first. But in digital card games, you don't get that choice. It's still randomized. And and I don't even think there's a lot of things that I can think of in Legends of Runeterra where, like, I would want to take it in or out of my deck, to, you know, if I'm going first or second. And Jagged Butcher starting out, getting that two poke damage down. So uh, just, you know, generally okay start from Guy. It's a typical start with the way that he's running his deck. Uh, it's almost guaranteed to get a one drop every single, uh, every single first hand, which is pretty nice. Again... Uh, I know a bunch of you are just joining us. There is three Krusty Codger main decked in Bry Guy's deck. Not sure if uh, any of those were sided out. Uh, I don't think we saw any Krusty Codgers in game two. So we'll see if we see any come down. But I'd uh, love to see this card in so many different decks. I think everybody's first thought was just put it in Soraka decks, but we're seeing it as an aggro tool more often. You are so excited for this one mana two tip. Hey, you know, hey, it's the little things in life, okay? <laughs> it actually did prompt uh, it, two players... Two separate players, independent of each other, one in Europe and one in North America, actually brought Vladimir Swain with Bilgewater uh, for these self-damage units. Wow, really? <laughs> yep. Vladimir Swain, okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, his final record last I checked was 1-4 in, <laughs> in the Eurasian you event. You should have just stopped while you were North America version. <laughs> you should have just left it with that and not told us the record. <laughs> like, okay, at least we know it's being played. Now nobody's going to play it because you mentioned the record. <laughs> well, there were there were cool decks in Europe on day two. We were like, oh, there's there's a Lulu Shivana deck and there's a Swain twisted or there's a Vladimir Tw Swain deck. Like, wait, what are they doing? And I'm like, Oh, they're actually playing each other in the one and three bracket. Lulu and Shivana. Yeah. T <laughs> I feel like that definitely did pretty bad. I think I, that thought went through my head at first to pair Lulu with Shivana for like a split second. And I was like, ah, no, never mind. <laughs> Look, it's it's the new Shen Fiora, baby. I'm telling you, as it's, soon as we all figure it out. Shen Fiora. Oh. This is the Lulu. Uh, this is the Ionia Demacia deck of the future. But uh, in, until Lulu. that future comes, we're still playing pirate aggro versus this. I blame the bug. Sin Zed and I blame the initial the bug on Lulu. That's why she got a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. It's not you know the continuous uh, bad decks that she's building. Ionia not doing what. Lulu is supposed to do. <laughs> oh man! But I mean, Lulu elusives was something that we oh, theorized yeah. about, and we do have an elusive player in this tournament in Pat Pat who is all but locked up for top eights or top sixteen so far. Mm -hmm. Who you know isn't running that? Yeah, we um. Nopify, Nopify is so insane versus Noxus Bilgewater. Nopify is incredible. Yeah, it, it's every single well actually decimate is outside of Nopify in this particular build, but a lot of times like TF Swain decks, Nopify pretty much hits all the spells. It feels so good to deny a Ravenous Flock when, you know, you actually want to consider using deny on a Ravenous Flock when that situation comes up, but it feels so bad because Ravenous Flock costs one mana. But Nopify changes the game a little bit. No Dragonling coming out this turn, but it doesn't matter because Guy has an elusive unit and any card in his deck that he does play here actually can get blocked by the Solari Shield Bearer. This extra unit coming in, I believe, out of the side deck of Zeramis. Yeah, Jack the Winner, good luck, buddy. You're not even surviving asleep with the fishies if you run into the Shield Bearer. <laughs> yeah, Shield Bearer, another great card uh, released with the initial Call of the Mountain release. Uh, I love it. I love the idea of the temporary buff. Usually gets a lot of value to... Uh, single combats and, and some decks using it while it's still at that six health so hush off the top from zeramis we'll see if that's going to come in handy right now doesn't seem like it It will allow for a block on the zap spray fin potentially in the future as far as what's on the field right now so we'll see if that uh, comes up but zeramis in a pretty good spot we're on turn seven and he's at 15 health still and when you're going up against a burn deck you like to see that especially because bry guy's going to be pretty tempted to take the value block onto this mentor of the stones but that does give you three gems to you know continue to run out these dragonlings even turn the eye of the dragon into an effective blocker as well as keep it healthy after the fact and for that reason we're just going to see bright guy let the attacks go says you know what no problem but now we are in range that if a lee sin ever comes out of zeramis the game ends on the spot it's no problem to get that up to four attack and it it is at four attack if it's leveled so mm -hmm. if we are in kick range Bry guy's just dead We've already seen two Noxian Fervor used. That is the best way to dodge the Dragon's Rage. And I think the only way in this deck. Uh, but now we are getting a lot of five drops down on the field for Bry Guy. Can throw the Sleep with the Fishies down onto this keg. No answer out of Zeramis for that one. 
Yeah, and we even have the Guiding Touch drawn now. So just some additional backup heal in the bag here. I, I do think Ceramis, again, is in a pretty good spot. That is definitely going to do a lot of work for Braggai there, getting through that additional damage with the Sleep of the Fishes on the keg. Uh, I love how that interaction works with you, you still being able to sacrifice the keg and get the additional damage. But uh, we have a Pale Cascade in hand as well. Like you said, we are going to get these Dragonlings pretty much every turn for the foreseeable future, especially if this Mentor of the Stones uh, does die, which... You know, at any point, Zeramis can offer it up as a block. And at least Sin off the top, I think Ooh. just about, I don't want to say wraps up the game, but I do think Bratchkata has the tools necessary to, to win this one now. Yeah, Braggai was sort of in a position to try and slow roll this with, you know, leveling yeah. the Gangplank, who is currently at four out of five, so will level off of the Sleep of the Fishes, and then just start to generate a keg every turn with that Gangplank, constantly throw down the Sleep of it, represent three damage every turn. You get another three damage on your attack turns for the Crackshot Corsair and the guaranteed damage of the Zap Sprayfin, so over the course of a long game, Guy yeah. might have actually been able to grind this one out, but no, the Lee Sin is off the top, as well as I was hoping that, you know, we'd get to see this cool situation where Guy goes in for the open attack, tries to, you know, get the Gangplank to level, so it turns yep. into a 6-6, six, six, survives through this 5-4, but the Crackshot Corsair ability would auto-level it, but there's a deny in Zeramis' hand that could have come in really cheeky, as well as the hush onto the Zap Spray Fin. Uh, you know, just get rid of all of the guaranteed damage that Braggai was supposed to have to level that, and I thought we'd get to mm -hmm. see sort of a really cheeky play to actually kill this uh, this Gangplank, but instead, uh, Braggai going to play it a little bit safe here. So, it looks like we're considering the hush on the Gangplank, or possibly the deny, and I kind of figured that's why Zeramis was taking so long to, to figure out what yeah. was going to happen here because it feels really bad denying a sleep with the fishes on the surface. But if you're preventing the pre-attack level up from the Gangplank, it feels good, but it feels really bad then having it followed up with a Decimate. That's still a lot of damage that could come through. So now we are going to see the Hush. So the, basically the backup response to that deny on the sleep of the fishes to prevent this Gangplank level. And not only that, it's going to prevent the Overwhelm on the Gangplank this turn. So... Those two spells, Deny and Hush, just prevented a lot of damage on the side of Zeramis. I would have preferred the Hush on the Gangplank straight away. You know that there's still a lot that your opponent is going to be able to do to level that GP. Even mm -hmm. if they don't get the one damage off on the attack, they still get to level with the Crackshot Corsair ability. Uh, we are still a little far away from the Lee Sin level, and I think that Guy has to go in with just Zap Spray Fin here. Yeah. Uh, you know, try to deny the gems coming out from the Mentor of Stone so that you can actually survive this Lee Sin, who, honestly, I don't know how far away this Lee Sin is from leveling. I don't think we've had a whole lot of spells come out yet. I might be sitting at 5 out of 8 at most. I think 5, it's either 5 or 6, it looks like, from that blinking arrow. But as we know, those arrows are deceiving. I have no clue what they actually mean. Uh, so it could be anywhere between 5 and 7 at this point. But he does have a Pale Cascade in hand that will be able to draw an additional card. He will get the draw off the top as well. So very possible we draw enough spells to level up the Lee Sin. Uh, and at the very least, we'll be able to challenge something. So that will remove something yeah, like the Crackshot Corsair off the field. Well, the Mentor of Stones is just going to be lethal. As we had mentioned, Braggai down to 4. As soon as this Lee Sin levels, the game ends. But... Uh, yeah, those three gems, no matter how far away we yep. are, that's definitely going to be enough. Chat's saying 7 out of 8, even if it's 5 out of 8. Yeah. It's all the same at this point. Yeah, and you got to wonder, too, knowing that the Lee Sin is down, why Guy would opt to play that Make It Rain there uh, when we can level this Lee Sin now and just go ahead and, and attack for a game. There's no possible response Guy could have here, right? There, There is. He side-decks Scorched Earth, so Ooh. if the damage had come down onto the Lee okay. Sin, you have the potential for the Execute. Uh, I don't, I mean, you know, we don't have deck lists. We don't know if he put it in. I would have to assume that he did now based on this. Uh, but double Noxian Fervor is generally sort of the other option that you have to dodge this. But we already used two of them earlier, so that is totally off the table. And I don't think there's anything that Guy can have that's going to be able to stop this. Yeah, not with that barrier on there. There's just, it's, it's too much to get through with this Lee Sin. And there's no way for... Bry guy to actually prevent this dragon's rage from going off either can you kill i guess you could kill your own gangplank no because in the overwhelm the, oh no there's no overwhelm on lee sin yeah but there's nothing you can do to kill your own gangplank not when you're down to noxian fervor already yeah if, yeah okay so if you already used to noxian uh but yeah that means ceram is gonna go ahead and take it there so advancing to five and two Bry guy gonna go to four and three now and uh gonna have a hard time making the top cut if 
All right, and Zoram is going to go ahead and take it home there with a W. We'll see if he's able to make the top cut. I do believe this means that Bry guy uh, would have to win round eight in order to make the top cut at this point in the tournament. But uh, until next time, everybody stay healthy, stay positive. I hope shit just works for you, and peace out.